And now stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous Go Farther Gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. For extra driving pleasure, the signal to look for is the yellow and black circle sign that identifies signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And for Sunday evening listening pleasure, the signal to listen for is this whistle that identifies the signal oil program, The Whistler. I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the whistler's strange story, Best Friend. The conversation and the cocktails were in full swing at the fashionable Brentwood gathering. Everyone present appeared to be relaxed, comfortable. All that is except Bob Talbot, who had a problem. A problem of strategy as he divided his time between pleasant small talk and the seriousness of his attempt to avoid Liz Wheeler, the wife of his best friend and business partner, Henry Wheeler. As the evening wore on and Bob's evasive tricks wore thin, the inevitable finally occurred. He found himself trapped in a quiet corner of the drawing room. Well, Bob, fancy running into you. Hello, Liz. Nice to see you. Is it? Of course. Oh, Bob, it's been ages. What's wrong? Now, Liz, I... Oh, I've been busy. Oh, yes. That sweet young thing I see you pictured with in the society section. Uh, Liz, this isn't the time or the place. I don't believe there's really anyone else, Bob. Uh, Liz, really, I... Darling, I've got to talk to you in private. It's no use. We've been through all this before. We're finished, Liz. It has to be that way. Why? Be because of Henry? Why, that's it, isn't it? Well, after all, he's my best friend. I, I just can't do <laughs> oh, this to him. I knew that was it. I knew you hadn't really stopped loving me, Bob. Liz, I'm... Liz, be careful. Henry's coming this way. Oh, don't go away, darling. We're still going to talk. I have plans for us and Henry. <laughs> ah, it's a fine party, huh, kids? Looks like it can go on all night. Hey, you two haven't been drinking. You can't enjoy a little old party without a drink, you know. Don't you think you're overdoing it a bit, dear? Overdoing it? Yeah, nonsense, nonsense, Liz. I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a great time. A Henry, must time. you shout? Everyone is staring. For goodness sake, straighten out. Straighten out? Well, look at me. I'm as straight as an arrow, just as Henry, straight as... Henry, be quiet. Oh, Liz, don't go spoiling the party. Look, I'm getting fed up with this. Always saying, don't do this, don't do that. Oh, it's you're acting a fine like a child. party. I'm having a great time. Now, just leave me alone, please. I can't even have any fun. Hey, Charlie. Henry's in rare form tonight. Bob, will you come to the house? I must talk to you. Liz, I've told you, we're finished. Please, Bob. Darling, I can leave now. No one will be surprised if I do. The way Henry's been behaving all evening, everyone has noticed it. But Liz... Don't I... worry. It's the servant's night out. See you in half an hour, darling. All right. All right, Liz. I'll be there. It's time for the showdown, isn't it, Bob? You could go on making her think the only reason you'd stopped seeing her was because of Henry, your uh, friendship with him. It was a convenient excuse to break off with Liz, wasn't it? And not once did she suspect the truth, that you've grown tired of her. There was really someone else now, the sweet young thing on the society page who was going to be another stepping stone to the top. And now as you sit with Liz in the library of her home, Liz, don't you see? I, 
I didn't realize what a real friend Henry was. I just can't do this to him. Darling, I've told you I can get rid of Henry. You know he wouldn't give you a divorce. Now, please don't talk about it. Henry has the, has the highest regard for me, and I feel the same thing oh, toward him. This ridiculous loyalty. I... Bob, don't you think you owe me something? Remember, I was the one who got you into the firm. Everything I am or hope to be, I owe to my darling Liz. Is that it? Well, now, Bob, don't be angry. I don't I just... need you anymore for anything. Oh. I've never loved you, Liz, not even in the beginning. From the start, I knew what I wanted. You were just the means of getting it. Oh, oh you're lying. You're trying to make me hate you and forget you. Oh, Bob, you know you love me. Liz, please. Look, darling, we're the same kind of people, you and I. We can't just call it quits because of a Henry. Oh, these past weeks without seeing you have been a nightmare. No, don't look away, Bob. Kiss me. Oh, darling, darling. Liz, it's no use. Listen to me, Bob. Henry's going up to the cabin this weekend. We'll have three whole days. Three days. No, no, we won't. Liz, can't you get it through your head? We're through. Understand, we're through. It has nothing to do with Henry. If I really loved you, I wouldn't let him stand in the way. Henry means nothing to me. No. Oh, no, Bob. I you... meant every word I said a moment ago. I never loved you. I used you to get what I wanted. Now I don't need you anymore. <laughs> now may I go home? What a fool I've been. What a stupid little fool. I loved you so much I actually thought I could kill for you. You Do you hear that? Nothing was going to stand in my way. Just so that I could have you. Good night, Liz. No. No, wait. What is it? You think you can just walk out, exit laughing? Is that it? Let's not have any dramatics, Liz. Liz, what are you... Liz. Oh, no. Now she pulls a gun. Aren't you being a bit absurd? Put that gun down. I said I could kill for you, Bob. Liz, put that gun down. You're not walking out of here to laugh at me. You're not going to that silly little society Don't thing. That. Are you crazy? Let's go. I want... Liz. Liz. Even as you speak her name, you know she's dead, don't you, Bob? You've killed Liz. You don't know how long you stand there staring at her, and then suddenly... Oh, Liz! Henry. Liz, baby. You home? Yes, Bob. He's Liz. coming in. Henry, your best friend. Honey. You look around frantically. Quickly turn off the lights. Honey. Leap behind the draperies as he stumbles into the room. Liz? Are you, you in the library, honey? Honey? Liz? Liz? Hidden behind the drapery as you wait as the minutes drag by. <sighs> and you wonder why Henry hasn't turned on the lights. And then you see him stretched out on the sofa. And you realize he's fallen asleep. You start for the door and suddenly stop. In an instant, a plan flashes through your mind. You can take advantage of Liz's tragic death. Use it to get rid of Henry. And with your partner out of the way, the firm of Wheeler and Talbot will come under your control. Yes, Bob, it'll be all yours. Quickly, you move across the darkened library. Wipe the gun. Place it in Henry's hand. He doesn't even stir. Sorry, Henry, old friend. But I guess this dissolves our partnership. <laughs> Gene Planet of Hollywood is the Whistler fan to whom we are sending a $20 signal gasoline book this week as a token of our appreciation for writing this limerick. If you really want to save money, here's a budget idea that's a honey. Signal gas in your tank is like cash in the bank. Signal goes so much farther, taint funny. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your car will go far.
Let's go, Father Gasoline. When she said signal gas in your tank is like cash in the bank, our friend from Hollywood certainly found a neat way of phrasing signals good mileage. But unfortunately, there wasn't room in the limerick to tell you about the other important dividends you enjoy when you power your car with Signal gasoline. I mean Signal's peppy pickup, Signal's satin smooth power. For like birds of a feather, mileage and performance go together. You'll enjoy both if you'll just heed the advice on those Signal billboards you've seen. Next time, fill up with Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. It's the next morning, hours after you fired the shot that killed Liz Wheeler. A lucky accident for you, wasn't it, Bob? The perfect opportunity to frame her husband, your partner, Henry Wheeler, for the crime. And with him out of the way, you'll be able to take over the business firm of Wheeler and Talbot. You know exactly what's going to happen. The servants will discover Liz in the library, Henry nearby, the gun with his fingerprints on it. You're confident that you'll be in the clear. But still you jump when the doorbell to your apartment rings. You've got to answer it, Bob. You must face this thing out. And you're sure you can. Yes? Sorry to get you out of bed, Mr. Talbot. I'm Lieutenant Loring, homicide. Came to see you about the Wheeler murder. Murder? But I'm afraid I don't... Henry, it's not Henry. No. His wife. Any reason why it should have been the husband? Well, no, no, of course not. Uh, forgive me. Uh, come in. I'm afraid you took me a little by surprise. Thank you. Now then, Mr. Talbot, this is purely routine, you understand, but I'm going to have to ask you where you were last night. Of course. I was at the same cocktail party the Wheelers attended. How well did you know Mrs. Wheeler? Well enough to call her Liz. I've been a dinner guest of theirs many times. Henry and I are business partners. I see. Henry's not under arrest, is he? No, he isn't. Oh. I thought some one of them might have started spreading that slander to you about Henry's rages. It isn't true, you know, not a word of it. I'm glad you're not falling for it, Lieutenant. We can't afford to jump to any conclusions, Mr. Talbot. Where did you go after the cocktail party last night? Straight home. Why? I get paid for asking questions. At the party, did you notice anything strange about the behavior of Wheeler or his wife? No, can't say that I did. Oh, they, they exchanged a few words about Henry's drinking so much. It's just one of those things. You, you know. and Wheeler are pretty close, aren't you? Henry's my best friend. Look here, can't you tell me where he is? I wish I could. When the servant found Mrs. Wheeler's body in the library this morning, both her husband and the gun that killed her had disappeared. Disappeared? But does that prove Henry's the murderer? Well, no, but on the basis of circumstantial evidence, it looks bad for him. In the past, he'd been heard quarreling with his wife. When we found her body this morning, there were signs of a struggle. And now Wheeler's vanished into thin air. Yes, it looks bad for him. Any idea where he might be? Why, no, no, not offhand. I, I can't imagine where. Well, if he needs help, he may try to get in touch with you. If he does, stall him. Find out where he is. Get in touch with headquarters right away. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, don't worry, Lieutenant. If Henry calls, you'll hear from me. You carry it off very well, don't you, Bob? Just the right amount of touching loyalty and devotion for Henry. And Lieutenant Loring seems to believe you. But you're worried, aren't you? You had hoped Henry would still be in the library when the servants discovered Liz's body. You wonder where he is. And just exactly how much he remembers about last night. Because Henry's the only one who might link you with a murder. You decide that you must find him before the police do. And then a few minutes after the lieutenant leaves. Hello? Hello, Bob. It's Henry. Henry. Can you talk? Of course, I'm alone. Did you hear the news on the radio? They say I killed Liz. Yes, I know. I gotta see you, Bob. You're the only person I can trust. Uh, where are you? Malibu at your beach house. 
What? Don't worry, no one saw me. But, Henry, you... Can you come out as soon as possible? I'm counting on you to help me. The police have already been here. I'd better wait till it's dark. All right. I... I can trust you, can't I, Bob? Of course. Of course, you can trust me. Oh, Bob, come in, come in. You weren't followed, were no, you? No, no, I don't think so, Henry. What do you mean, you don't think so? Just that. Now, take it easy. We'll work out something between us. We'll get you out of town, out of the country, if possible. Out of the country? But, Bob, that, that would be like admitting I'd killed Liz, and I, I didn't kill her. That is, I... I, I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember killing her. Exactly what do you remember about last night, Henry? Well... I, I came home alone from the party. I took a cab. I had a little too much to drink. Yes, go on. When I got home, the house was dark. I, I called to Liz and... Hey, wait a minute. What is it? I remember now, coming up to the house, there, there was a light on in the library. You, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm positive. Yet a few minutes later, when I walked into the library, the light was out. I, I remember trying to find the light switch, and then I sat down on the couch... I guess that's when I must have fallen asleep. And that's all you remember? I'm, I'm afraid so, Bob. When did you wake up, Henry? Oh, around five this morning. First thing I saw was Liz's body. And then the gun beside me, and I... I guess I sort of went to pieces right then. I couldn't think of anything but getting out of there. That's when I came here. I see. That's the story, Bob. I... I swear that's all I remember. Henry, I'm going to be frank with you. I don't think the police will believe it. But it's the truth, Bob. Somebody else must have killed Liz. Listen, Bob, about the light in the library, do you think it could mean anything? Huh? Are you sure you saw a light? Yes, yes, I... That's how I noticed the car in the driveway. The car? Yeah, Liz's car, the convertible. I didn't know if she was home or not until I saw... Hey, wait a minute, it... Maybe it wasn't her car. Oh, now, Henry... That convertible could have belonged to someone else. I didn't give it a second glance. I just took it for granted it was Liz's car. Did, did you uh, notice the color of the car? Well, no, I... It, it was a dark one. Liz had a black convertible, Henry. <laughs> yeah, sure, but that car could have been uh, maroon, dark green, blue. You, how can you tell the difference at night? All right, Henry, all right. Bob... You think I'm making all this up? I didn't say that, Henry. Don't you but... see, Bob? If there was someone else in there in the house, someone who might have killed Liz, he, he could have turned the lights out in the library when he heard me come in. Now, doesn't that make sense? Well, yes, yes, it makes sense. But I don't think you can afford to bet too heavily on it, Henry. Oh, if only I could remember. Perhaps I did notice something about the car. If, if I could remember... Yes, Bob, that's it. What's the matter? The cab driver, Bob, he could have noticed. In turning around, his headlights could have swept over the car. He might have noticed the color. Yes, it's possible, well, Look, we've got to find him. We've got to find him. You've got to find right, that cab Henry, driver. All right, Henry, all right. Now, where did he pick you up? Uh, well, come on. Oh, I don't remember. When you left the party, which way did you walk? I, I'm not sure. Henry... <laughs> Toward the boulevard, probably. Oh, all right, all right, Henry. I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, stay undercover. And don't give yourself up to the police. That would spoil everything. Yes, Bob. You know you must keep Henry away from the police at any cost. They might want to know more about the light in the library window and the car parked in the driveway. Your dark green convertible. As you hurry away from the beach house, you realize that won't be enough, keeping Henry away from the police. You'll have to get rid of him somehow for good. But before you do that, you must find out just what that cab driver knows. If he can identify your car as the one parked in the driveway, the night Liz Wheeler was killed. <laughs> No, but uh, uh, perhaps you can help me. I'm trying to find a driver who took a friend of mine home last night. Think maybe I did, huh? 
Well, I've already checked half a dozen cab stands in the neighborhood. No luck, I... huh? Okay. What do you look like? Well, he was uh, tall, heavy set, wearing a tux. Uh, uh, would it be a guy named Wheeler you're uh, asking about? Sure, I drove the guy home. I, I didn't know what his name was until, not until I seen the papers this morning. Did he really bump off his wife? Well, I, uh, uh we don't know. Look, uh, when you drove Wheeler home, did, uh, did you notice a car parked in the driveway? A car in the driveway? No, no, no. I, I wouldn't even be sure there was a car. I had my hands full with that lush Wheeler, and I just wanted to get rid of him before we got into another ride. I see, I see. I'm sorry I can't help you, buddy. The cab driver doesn't remember seeing your car in the driveway, does he, Bob? That leaves only Henry to worry about. And now you've got to silence him. Your life is at stake if Henry talks to the police. If he suddenly remembers that the car he saw parked in the driveway was yours. Yes, you've got to get rid of Henry before that happens. But how, Bob? It's something to think about, isn't it? Murder. And the thought stays with you all that night. And then the following morning, there's a phone call from Lieutenant Loring. Why, no, Lieutenant. Wheeler hasn't tried to contact me. I see. Well, the reason I called, uh, Wheeler owned a gun, didn't he? Uh, yes, yes, he did. The, the thirty-two, I believe. We just got the report from ballistics. Mrs. Wheeler was shot with a thirty-two. I see. The gun's disappeared with Wheeler. So remember, he's armed and probably desperate. If he contacts you, don't try to help him. He's dangerous. You understand? Don't worry, Lieutenant. I understand perfectly. That's it, isn't it, Bob? Suddenly you found the answer. The gun that killed Liz. Lieutenant Loring has unknowingly pointed the way out to you. The way to get rid of Henry. He'll be found dead a suicide with a murder weapon by his side. It's as simple as that, isn't it, Bob? But he mustn't be found at your beach house. That wouldn't do, would it? That night when you go back to the beach house with a ready-made story for Henry, you know that somehow you've got to get that gun. The cab driver, Bob, did you find him? Yes, I found him. But he can't do you a bit of good, Henry. He doesn't remember the car in the driveway. Oh. I see. Now, cheer up. I found a way out. I've located a first mate on a tramp steamer bound for South America. He wants 5,000 cash. No questions asked. But, Bob, running away... It's your isn't... only chance, Henry. I promise you, once you're out of the country, I'll do everything in my power to solve this thing. Bob, you believe me, don't you? You know I didn't do it. Yes, Henry, I do believe you, but the police won't. All right. When do I leave? Uh, well, not for another week, so we've got to move you to a safer place. How about your cabin up at Moon Lake? The cabin? Yes. No one's ever known about your little hideaway outside of us, you, Liz, and I. All right, I'll go. Uh, before we leave, Henry, you'd better give me the gun. The gun? Yes. Yes, I'll get rid of it for you. All right. Here it is. Fine. Now, listen, Henry. I think I'll go on up ahead. Make sure everything is all right at the cabin. Now, if I'm not back here by late tomorrow afternoon, say, 5 o'clock, wait till it's dark, then come on up. You have a car. Yes, I took the Jameson station wagon. They are our next-door neighbors. They loaned it to me when they went away for the summer. Then you're all set. Bob, why can't I go now? No, Henry. It's important that I go up to the cabin first, alone. I want to be certain the coast is clear. Besides, I... I don't think it's wise for us to travel together. Yeah, sure, sure. I guess I'm behaving pretty badly. Ah, huh? oh, forget it. Well, I'd better get going. See you at the cabin tomorrow night, Henry. All right. And, uh... Bob. Thanks for everything, huh? Only too glad to do it, Henry. Anything for a friend. <laughs> Because summer weather causes many motor oils to break down and form harmful gum, varnish, and carbon, I want to tell you tonight about an improved type motor oil that's specifically engineered to stand up under heat. It's Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. 
the finest lubricant ever offered by the makers of Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Naturally, Signal Premium has 100% pure paraffin base. But in addition, it contains scientific compounds that make Signal Premium do what oil alone could never do. One of these compounds, for instance, keeps Signal Premium from thinning out and losing its body, no matter how high the thermometer goes. Another compound protects against bearing corrosion. And still other compounds actually cleanse your motor of varnish, gum, or carbon that may be already there. So if you want to keep wear down when the temperature's up, now's the time to stop at a signal station and change to the improved type oil that stands up under heat. Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. Some 36 hours after Bob Talbot had left Henry Wheeler at the Malibu Beach House, Lieutenant Loring of Homicide hurried into the coroner's office at Moon Lake. The body had already been brought down from the isolated mountain cabin, and soon the puzzle began to fit together. There in the smoke-filled office, what had happened was all perfectly clear. All that remained now was for the lieutenant to step out into the hall, walk through the early morning gloom to the man sitting quietly on the bench, the man the police had picked up at the Wheeler's mountain cabin. Well, it's all over. You're in the clear, Wheeler. But I... I don't understand, Lieutenant. Your good friend, Bob Talbot, confessed he killed your wife. Bob? Killed Liz? But the cabin, what happened there, the explosion? Somebody set up a booby trap in your cabin. Used gunpowder and a big kerosene lamp. Rigged it to explode, and it did just that. When Talbot put a match to her. But who would do such a thing, and why? Talbot had a guess. Told the sheriff about it, just before he died. Your wife, Wheeler, he figured she did it. She was in love with Talbot. Liz? Yeah. She meant that booby trap for you. Only Talbot walked into it instead. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Remember, if you would like the fun of having your friends hear a limerick of yours on The Whistler, the address to which to send it is Signal Oil Company, Los Angeles, California. All limericks become the property of Signal Oil Company. Those selected for use on the Whistler will be chosen by our advertising representatives on the basis of humor, suitability, and originality. So, of course, they must be your own composition. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were David Ellis, William Conrad, Joan Banks, and Ted Osborne. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen, directed tonight by Sterling Tracy with story by Norman R. Kramer, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember, at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking.